bass is jacked. I got my bullets and diamonds, and I ain't holding back. I'm all in. Yeah, I'm going to kick it. Pocket rockets are ticking. If you got what it takes, you can play high stakes. I'm all in. I'm These all ladies in. ain't ladies unless they your ladies. Put your hand on a monster, that's what it takes. And if you got what it takes, you can play high stakes. Previously on High Stakes Poker, the first true televised cash game. As the game broke up, some of the best pros in the world were betted by amateur Amir Nasiri, who left the table with $100,000 of their money. But the bigger winner was Sammy Farha, who on the last hand of the night saw a miracle flop and won a pot worth nearly $400,000. And Daniel Negrano, who attempted to intimidate the table with a bankroll of $1 million, went home with a quarter million dollar loss. Tonight, the game resumes with new faces and some returning players looking to continue their luck, avenge their losses, and play in the biggest game in town. From Las Vegas, Nevada at the Golden Nugget Resort, this is High Stakes Poker. I'm AJ Benz, alongside poker analyst and co-host Gabe Kaplan. Gabe, you saw some great action last time. Sammy Farr left the table with $360,000. He was aggressive, intimidating, and lucky. Lucky is a key word there. All that $360,000 was on the line in the last hand against Barry Greenstein. Sammy had kings. Barry had aces. Sammy drew out and won the pot. They took Barry to Bad Beat Recovery Hospital. He says he'll be back in about two weeks. Good news. But Gabe, I got to tell you, people out there are looking at these guys play with hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line with a pair, and a guy like me won't bet a thousand dollars unless I know I have a royal flush coming. You might wait a while for that <laughs> royal flush, AJ. That's the difference. Sometimes tens are good, and sometimes a full house isn't. Knowing that difference is what puts these particular players at this table. Well, we got a really good, interesting mix of players tonight, don't we? Oh, yeah. The big papa, Dole Brunson, is back. Johnny Chan is making his first appearance. Dr. Amir Nasiri is back. We have a new amateur, Fred Shamanara. And Fez Freddy Deeb is here. And Freddy Boom Boom Washington's on the way. <laughs> if Horshack shows up, I'm out of here. Let's get to the action. I got 100,000 coming. 50,000. Here, Daniel, those are mine. <clears throat> right, yeah. That's Sammy Farhar. He's bought in for 100 grand tonight. Here's the amateur, Fred Shamanar, a Chicago restaurateur. He's also in for 100000 Next to him is Fast Freddy D, a World Series bracelet winner. He has $100,000 at stake. And Daniel Negrano, 2004's Player of the Year. He's still sitting now with $800,000. Ellie Lezra already won hundred grand previously. World Poker Tournament champion. Didn't he beat you, Gabe? Where? Who cares? That was a tournament. This is a cash game. AJ, we're concentrating on cash <laughs> games. What, right. is, what does Ellie have here? He's in the pot. Come You're on. Right. My fault. Unless you've got a jack three suited. Brunson opens up with a nine six. Not getting into personalities here, AJ. <laughs> action is down to two players, and the legend, Doyle Brunson, back for more action, has raised to $10,000 on the big line. I do it. You trail them races into me. I know you're going to show me do seven, but it's not time to go ahead and uh, do seven. I think. I'll let them go. And I'll Ellie lays his hand down. And Sammy Farhar asked Doyle to see his cards. See I don't mind being there. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> I saw an ace. <laughs> Sammy picked him up anyway. Sure you don't be limping in. <laughs> he lied about I'll Doyle's hand, but. I want you to do it. Keep doing it. Please. Show me. You got a little information there for free. So Brunson wins the first hand and sets the tone. There will not be any limping tonight. Two more players join the action. Dr. Amir Nasiri, an amateur, is back for more. Last time he played, Dr. Nasiri won $80,000. He's sitting down with $200,000 tonight. And joining the table is 10-time World Series bracelet winner Johnny Chan, considered to be one of the greatest of all time. He's in the game for $100,000 as well. Doyle and Johnny, both Hall of Famers, are the only two players to win 10 bracelets at the World Series of Poker. Negrano's raised to $2,400 on a Queen Jack suited, and Brunson has called with a 5-3 of spades. Farah's got an ace-4 off suit, and he's in. And in the big blind, Fast Freddy Deeb, he's got 7-8 off suit. He's wondering, is it worth another $1,800 to call? And I think it is, because he is Fast Freddy Deeb. <laughs> Not too fast here, but I think he's going to call. Love his work on taxi as well. Don't be shy. Come on in. <laughs> you want to get your feet wet? Made you wonder what I'm thinking, right? I don't wonder too much about you. <laughs> well, it's four-way action to the flop. Try not to think about it. Queen, nine, king with two spades. Check. Okay. Check's good. You got a hand, Sammy? Yeah. Now, Doyle has flopped the flush draw, but it's a very small flush draw. And he's going to try and get the pot right here. Brunson bets $9,000. 
And Sammy Faha makes it 35,000. The cameraman wasn't on him because he didn't think Sammy would bet with the hand he has. <laughs> but he doesn't realize that's Sammy Faha, and he's made it 35,000. I don't want to change it. Huh? Go for chips. How come 25 don't play anyway? Oh, they play? Action falls back over to Brunson and needs to put in $26,000 more. more But he gives up the hand to Farhar. Ballsy play by Sammy Farhar. He took Doyle's temperature in that first hand, looked at Doyle's cards, decided Doyle couldn't stand a raise, that Doyle was maybe on a draw. A little reckless, Freddie Deeb and Daniel Negrano were behind him. Didn't bother him, fight out 35000 we're at the Golden Nugget Resort in downtown Las Vegas playing high stakes poker. Actions on Daniel Negrano. Jack first. He's got an 8 6 suited. He raises the $2,500. What's going on? He's the big I'm raising every hand. That's what's going on. I was 20. you play this game back, I play all my this table conversation is great. How much are you raising? Let's just eavesdrop and listen to some of it. He goes from 28 to 25. I like your slides, though. Yeah, Danny. Keep it, keep it up. Keep it up. All right. So far, so good until somebody calls. As soon as you quit, <laughs> I start doing it. Don't worry, we were spanking yesterday. Yeah, you got yeah, what you yeah, deserve. You, oh, really? You got me in real bad shape, yeah. Yeah. How bad did you spank him? He started with the mill. I, I doubled 100,000. He, he lost yeah. uh, 200, 200. I had, uh, he was up 100. What? So I lost three pretty sick hands. Huh? We let him keep rising like that. We'll teach him. I remember when well, you lost to me. King High Flush, I flopped. Got all in. Barry had the ace of clubs. No poker stories, please. I don't want to hear no poker stories. Then you're in the wrong place. You guys want to poker stories? No, I want to figure out who owed me the 100 yet. I think you're going to lose that 100, to be honest with you. He said he'll never. No worries eating at him, too. <laughs> we got him on tilt already, right? <laughs> See why I don't volunteer for those kind of things? Let them break their head. You decided to volunteer. Well, I don't want to slow up I don't think game. you're going to get it. Uh, yeah, I, just, yeah, I get it. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Johnny Chan called the King Deuce suited. <clears throat> A Lesnar calls with a Jack-10 offsuit. Brunson's got a 4-3 of hearts. He's in. Over to Farha. <coughs> Sammy's got ace-king. And he's not going to let this go. He raises to 4,600. You think he'll see action with that game? Will he see action? I think people at the other tables are going to call him. <laughs> Can't let you play by yourself, Sam. Well, at least he's got one guy that's coming in. Elia Lesra. Right, let me get rid of this one here. And now let's see if Doyle calls it's, it's with his 4-3 suited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's three-way action to the flop. Got a queen and two jacks. Ellie flops three six, jacks. Six, one, and one thing six, Sammy one, doesn't one, want to do double now double is two. make a straight because that right. would give Ellie a full house. Ellie casually checked, by the way. I see the jack of spades and I'm on for double. And Farha bets 20 grand. What you got, Sammy? I forgot. Oh, you want me to take a look again? It's been a while. I, I love the way Ellie is acting here. He would have convinced me he doesn't have much of a hand. <laughs> I would put him on a draw or maybe an underpair. At this moment, I would not put Ellie on a big hand. It's fine now. That raise. Now I would start to wonder. <laughs> that is 30,000. 50 total. 30, more. So Elezra raises the 50 grand, pushing the pot past $86,000, and Brunson's going to let his favorite two people battle this one out. Yeah, 10 king. 10 king suited. And Sammy does yeah, not suit. like go for flush. You playing behind? that Ellie has either made a play <laughs> against him or okay, Ellie has a big hand. So you have about 40 minutes, I think right? just like yeah, me, 30, Sammy did not think 30, that Ellie had a big hand. It's going to cost far 30, 30 grand to see the turn card. Oh, he's not calling. This is just part of the Sammy show. <laughs> Coming soon to a theater near you. <laughs> Sammy Fahar. Acts like he's going to call. See Sammy act like he's going to call. <laughs> then see Sammy throw his hand away. <laughs> I want eight from Doyle and four from you. Maybe he won't throw his hand away. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Shockingly, Sammy Farha falls. <coughs> Ali Lezra wins the hand, enjoying the sweet smell of victory and taking down a pot worth over eighty-six thousand dollars. <laughs> Ali is—he's uh, really aggressive. He's a great player. He takes a lot of chances. I like to play with him because I take my chances also. So I'd rather have players like him that we take chances. 
And chances are that Johnny Mathis will not be joining this game, but Ellie does take chances. Not quite the same level of chances that Sammy Farhart takes, but he takes chances. Action falls to Alezra with an ace nine off suit. He's gonna call. And Farhart with pocket nines. Raises $4,600. Action to Fred Shamanara. He looks like Mo Green from The Godfather. Without the bull in the eyeglasses. <laughs> Freddie Deem's got pocket tens. Michael. He just calls. That kind of surprised me. I would expect Freddie Deep to put in a little raise here, but that's why Freddie Deep is a very unpredictable player. You never know what he's going to do. Steam raise. Freddy smell it. Freddy didn't smell anything. We'll Freddy has a hand, a pair of tens, Ellie. <laughs> and Sammy usually does not steam. He steals, does not steam usually. <laughs> now we're talking about Ellie taking chances. Let's see if he takes a chance with an ace nine here. I'll let you Lebanese fight this one. No, we need you here. <laughs> No chance there for the Israeli. He's going to let the Lebanese guys <laughs> fight it out. Flop comes three ace five with two clubs. Yeah. Freddie Deeb is still in the lead here. And Elijah would have flopped a pair of aces if he'd stayed in the hand. Stayed in the hand. That's the key statement there. If he took a chance and stayed in the hand. And Farhaz pushed $15,000 more into the pot. How much more you got, Sam? About now, Freddie D, Not exactly because he didn't raise with his tens, let Sammy Farhart take control of his hand. Look at this. He throws his hand away. Wow. Uncharacteristic for Freddie D. Freddie, let me introduce you to Sammy Farhart and show you his <laughs> resume. <laughs> Looks like Farhart is gearing up for another big night. We're in downtown Las Vegas at the Golden Nugget Resort, playing high stakes poker. And Sammy Farr looks like he's getting a little comfortable at the table today, huh, Gabe? He's comfortable, but he's not quite as frisky as he was in our last couple of shows. I think uh, Johnny Chan's presence at the table might have something to do with that. Right now he's under the gun with a queen five of clubs. He calls. Mo Green throws his hand away. <laughs> What is it, 600? Freddie D picks up Gosh. a huge hand, ace king off suit. Oh, I call. And only calls with it. Is that Freddie D or Jerry Buss? <laughs> I missed the triple there, Daniel. Raise it. Is it a triple? Make it 6,600. No. I won one, but Oh, he folded already. I'm sorry. It'll be 6,600 to you. No? Uh, no, it could be six, and then I can just give it to you. Right. Johnny Chan started that by folding out a turn, and then Daniel raised out a turn. But it's all wow, centered 66. around trying to get the doctor wow. to play faster. Doctor's slowing up the game, and the pros don't like it. And Lesnar catches an ace king as well. He's got the looks. He's thinking of raising. The only one I believe he's afraid of in this hand is Freddie D. He didn't like that limp from Freddie D. He's comfortable That's raising good. Daniel. Win 1800 with 66. It's one possibility. And he's comfortable raising Sammy Farhar. Yeah, Even though he's not looking straight. at him, he's yeah. thinking about Freddie Deep. <laughs> Eight high straight, six high straight, something like that. I raise it 42. 100? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and Elliot Lazar goes over the top, re raising to $48,600. $42,000. And he still hasn't looked at Freddie Deep. You playing behind Eli? <laughs> That's all what I got, my friend. That's all I can win. Now the moment of truth. I mean, Chow keeps staring How much is it to me? Another 48 grand for D to call with the same hand. 50,000? 48.6. Now this shows you the difference between a cash game and a tournament. If these same two players are playing in a tournament, I don't think there's any doubt that Freddie D would call here. That's what you got but if he calls this 48-6, again, that's $48,600 of his own money, and he's not going to do it. Freddie Deeb lays down the same hand. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elia after uh, careful deliberation, uh, made the right play for a cash game. For you, he was going to call. Eight high. No. And the more I aggressive think. player won the hand. That's what I was going to do. I know. I'll take it off of his stats. You can lie. You know what I mean? It's no, legal to lie, to Eli. Yeah, it's Eli, you huh? can lie. You can lie, but then I'll get caught, you know? You'll, but you'll get caught later, so you can lie now. I did have ace king, so I lied. I said I had two sixes. Daniel, have eight high, I believe him. I didn't have eight high. I really didn't. No? No. Whatever he had was not worth 42,000. Totally Is that what you bet? Yeah. 2,800. He raised the 40,000. This whole thing sounds like a Jackie Mason routine. You can lie to Eli if Eli lies to you. <laughs> if an Israeli lies to a Lebanese, then the Jew will lie to the Lebanese, and the Lebanese won't know what he's got. He's going to say he's got a pair of sixes. I don't know what's going on. So Shaman on his call with a queen 10 suited, and the ground was raised to $2,800 on a nine eight of hearts. And Brunson's trying his hand with a 6 4 clubs. And the flop comes with a 4 3 8 with two hearts. Good. The ground was flop top pair and has a flush draw. The ground will bet six thousand dollars. And Doyle looks like he's in the mood to gamble. <laughs> Doyle calls. He's got a pair of fours, a backdoor flush. So Shamanar is gone. And the turn card is going to be a nine of diamonds, giving the Grano a two pair. Doyle's going to take a shot at this pot. $15,000 shot. He's not going to like what's going to happen right now. <laughs> Doyle's kind of hoping that Daniel missed the flop, maybe has a flush draw. That's Johnny Chan in the background <laughs> modeling his <laughs> chubby Chinese sweater collection. <laughs> And Negrano tosses a brick of $50,000 cash onto the table. There's no way Doyle can call here, and Doyle won't take much time. And the legend, Doyle Brunson, folds his hand, and Daniel Negrano collects a nice pot worth over $86,000 in cash. That hand was so big. Could this be the beginning of a turnaround for Daniel Negrano? Yeah. You're watching High Stakes Poker Action. And remember, this is a cash game. The blinds are three and six hundred dollars along with hundred dollar antes. Unlike tournament play, it never changes. The antes and the blinds are there to stimulate the action. And it looks like it stimulated Dr. Amir Nasiri here. He's got seven five offsuit. And in a relatively early position here, he said he's gonna make it 3600 he's trying to steal the blinds and Annie's also he's been sitting for a while and he wants to play so he puts in a $3,600 bet with a 7-5 now Elia Lezra has ace jack he's at least going to call and he does and Doyle has king queen he's going to call so you got three players seeing the flop and Dr. Amir Nasiri is hoping to get real lucky the pot is now over $11,000 we'll go to the flop King, Jack, Ace with two clubs. So Lesnar flops two pair and Brunson a king along with a straight draw. And a backdoor flush draw. Check. Check it. Dr. Nasiri bet 7,000. I can't blame mm -hmm. him for doing that. He's going to get a quick call from Ellie, and Doyle's probably also going to call. His mistake was not that $7,000 bet on the flop. He doesn't know what these players have. His mistake is getting involved in this hand in the first place with 7-5 offsuit. And he's run into a couple of barracudas with hands. Turn card to seven, giving the Sari a pair. I noticed. You won't get it to the end. Well, actually, the only way that Dr. Nasiri could have won this hand is by catching of 7-7 seven, seven on the turn and river, or 5-5 five, five on the turn and river. He's got his first seven. Well, the river calls another jack, giving Elezra a full house. Jack's full of aces. Elezra bets $25,000. <clears throat> Doyle throws his hand away. None of his potential came in. 
wound up with a pair of kings. Didn't think it was good, and he was right. And I hope Dr. Nasiri isn't trying to figure out some scenario <laughs> where he's going to call Ellie here, maybe figuring Ellie has a busted flush draw. And thankfully for his wife, his family, and for the women who are going to come into his <laughs> office tomorrow, everybody's going to have an easier time because <laughs> he threw that hand away. And Elia Lezra takes down another nice pot, this one worth $57,500 in cash. He's going to be tough to beat tonight. Elia has won $85,000 already, and right now he's the head shark at the table. Poker is all about uh, find the right player to play against. And in the poker world, we call it a fish. If you have a good fish in the table, that's when you're coming to go ahead and uh, catch him. And uh, that's, that's how we tease each other. He said, you lose, you are the fish today. I'm a fish probably at the table, but. Uh, <laughs> when Ellie first started well, playing in cash in games in Vegas, some people did call him a fish, <laughs> but I haven't heard him refer to as a fish play. since uh, Flipper went off walk. the air. <laughs> Shamanara call with an eight jack offsuit. Now Nasseri with a nine five offsuit. He's gonna raise to $2,600. Continuing his reckless play, he's trying to pick on Freddy Chaminara here. Alezra also with an ace-jack offsuit. This is not the kind of table you want to try and overpower. Alezra calls. Too much, Eli. Action's not a far hard. The big blind with the 6-4 offsuit. What are you talking about? I thought you said 36. He calls the raise. So does Shamanara. Yeah. Chop? You chop, Freddy? I chop right now. Four Hold players. it. Hold it. Chop? Deal, deal the cards. No chopping here. We can yeah, do we that chop. chop stuff. What are you guys doing again? No, no, no. no, no we can pops. chop. Deal. Don't say the object. Go. Deal. When they talk about no, chopping, they're not talking about entering a karate school. <laughs> that means splitting the pot, everybody taking an equal amount of money. Some players wanted to do it, and some players strenuously objected to it. They wanted to chop. They probably don't have anything, so... Six thousand. Six thousand. How do you know that? Sammy's look very weak, and I eat carrots. Ellie is right. Sammy was weak. He has six four offsuit. That's why he wanted to chop. Amir, who got in trouble in the last hand, looked like he was going to get in trouble in this hand also. He raised it up with nine five offsuit. He wanted to chop. You can do anything you want. Oh, you can. But don't waste time with four weight chops. Who's going to do that? Doesn't matter. You're not in the pot. You don't make a comment. We know it was kidding. Oh, is that right? a new rule now? That's a new rule. <laughs> That's the Dr. Amir rule? rule? And That's Daniel, who wasn't even in the pot, do 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 he objects to the chop because it slows up the game. He wants to gamble. He wants to get his money back. Thank you, Ben. Chop it, chop it, chop it. If Sean was here, then another guy. Let's chop, let's chop. Four-way, five-way, chop, chop. What do you want to do? Let's give me a profit. Give me 100 back. No, give me 200 back. Ah, shit up. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing that all night last night. He's talking to Sammy Paha. Mr. Chop? Yeah. Well, Sammy likes to gamble. He doesn't want to chop. Well, he wants to win them. Right? I, I want to gamble. I gamble with the hand, but I'd rather Listen, get my money back. <laughs> We're back at the Golden Nugget Resort in downtown Las Vegas playing high stakes poker. Oh, that's a bad gamble. Well, so, play continues in this cash game with Dr. Amir Nasiri under the gun. He's lost about $15,000 for the night. He just calls this time with an ace jack of diamonds. Well, it's not a quality hand like 7-5 or 9-5 <laughs> offsuit. Play my rush. Alezra's feeling it. He calls with a 9-8 offsuit. Brunson's king, queen of spades. Raises the $4,600. So you already declared the bad hand by saying play my rush. We give Doyle an edge there. <laughs> they have enough carrots for you, Eli, I mean. <laughs> Three players. You think I call with bad hands, Fred? What's a bad hand? I don't know what a bad hand is. I play all hands. And the flop comes king, jack, nine, all different suits. No, you're not. They've all caught a piece of the flop. Brunson's paired his king and has a gut shot straight draw, and a series paired his jack, and Ellie's flop bottom pair. So it checks over to Brunson. And he's reaching for some cash here. Uh, 
$12,000 bet. Interesting to see what the doc's going to do here. He's got middle pair with top kicker. And this is about the best hand he's flopped tonight, and I know he wants to play. But he's going to throw it away. That's a smart move. Oh, that hand is jinxed against you. Now, Ellie calls with just a pair of nines. This is very surprising to me. So let's head to the turn here. Check. So three of diamonds, no help to Ellie at all. And Ellie made a very ambitious call, pushing his luck, I believe, on the flop. Whatever Doyle bets here, it's going to be almost impossible for Ellie to call. He has to put Doyle on something. Brunson makes it to sixty thousand dollars to go, and Alesra quickly gives up the hand to the legend. Of course he can. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We've been doing it all day. Let me see. Go. Cool. River card would have been the eight of spades, and Ellie would have won the hand. <laughs> Man, I had a huge hand. His rush would have continued. I had my usual method. First few hours in a poker game is a positional thing, anyway. It just evolves. The game evolves, you know, from um, maybe a passive game, and if the right people get loser, and or if the right people get winner, the game just gets bigger and faster and, and more exciting. Poker philosophy from the Big Papa. I think what he said is the game's getting bigger. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. That's what it sounded like to me. I know he pulled down a bunch of cash in that last hand. Race. Shamanar raises the 2,500 with an ace queen of diamonds. Shamanar, ma, shamanar, ma. <laughs> Badu. <laughs> Showing your age, Gabe. <laughs> Nasiri calls a 9 6 of hearts. Hey, I was 30 when that song was recorded. <laughs> Johnny Chan's now, in with a pair of sevens. Negrano calls with two fives. So it's four players to the flop. Comes 10 3 6. Johnny Chan's got the best hand. And no help to our original razor, Fred Shamanara. He checks, and now it's up to Dr. Amir Nasiri, who has okay. a pair of sixes and who has been itching to play. He also seems to want to be in hands with Fred Chaminara. I don't know, maybe he thinks he can outplay Fred. But it looks like he's going to bet here and hope his sixes are the best hand. They're the second best hand. <laughs> well, he bet $6,500. A Chan falls, the ground falls, actions back to Fred Shamanara. Now he might be picking up on this, that the doctor's trying to push him around. He raised before the flop, he checked, which could be to disguise a big hand, and the doctor came out and he bet. Now Freddie C here is trying to figure this out. He bet before the flop. Then he checked on the flop, which could be to disguise a big hand, and Dr. Nasiri doesn't seem to have any fear. He comes out and bets. You don't come to Vegas and treat a man like Mo Green like that, Gabe. And there isn't a statue, and there isn't a signpost. I'll raise. All right, Mo Green's going to raise. Showing some good instincts here. He is sizing this hand up very well. Right away. How much is that? 65. 2,500 more. Nine. You want it. Excellent play. So Fred Shamanara takes down his first part of the night. The series aggression continues to backfire. He's now lost 30 grand for the night. We're in downtown Vegas playing high stakes poker. Play continues with Shamanara on deck to act first. He's got an ace 10 offsuit. And he's going to call here. I raise it. 3,200. <laughs> Somebody wake him up? Yeah, I like the number 32. Nasiri's not backing down. He raises the $3,200 with an ace four suited. Continues to try and pick on Fred Chaminara. 
Well, incidentally, is his countryman. This could start a civil war. <laughs> Another one, huh? I don't know what this is based on. It could be that uh, maybe Doc uh, ate at Fred Chaminar's restaurant in Chicago and didn't like the food. <laughs> So Don, I'm custom. sorry I told you yesterday, give us so much action and stuff, I was wrong. You know what, you have to get him stuck 2,000 for us to see cool. some I'm action. I'm stuck 20,000. You're stuck 20,000? 20, and Fred Chaminara yeah, calls as Ellie and Sammy really discuss something that has nothing to do with the hand, and Doyle <laughs> continues to enjoy his <laughs> grit <problem>. sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> flop comes 7 3 10. Chaminara flops top pair. He lies again. He's not stuck 20. I guarantee he's not Johnny point. knows where hey, the hole is. Johnny goes. knows everything what's happening. How much I'm up, John? Now, this I'm time, right, Fred Chaminara <laughs> really has a hand. No, he's good. More than that. He's flopped top pair, it's top kicker. To 20, at least. <laughs> 60, huh? Yeah, he checks to the Sari. I just lost 10 for Doyle. I bet. 11. Here he goes again. Nasiri takes another shot of the pot and bets $11,000 cash on just ace high. Maybe one of these guys supported the Shaw and one didn't. <laughs> That's good. Doc Nasiri has really picked the wrong time here. Fred Chaminar has got top pair, top kicker. The other guys at the table keep on talking. You hear the potpourri of accents as Fred's trying to decide what to do here. It's not very polite. Yeah. These players are professionals. They should give him a little distance here, a little room, a little space. Call. He just calls. I think he's aware of what Doc Nasiri is trying to do, and he's trying to get as much money out of this hand as he can. If an ace would come up, it would be terrible for Nasiri. Got a queen of diamonds on the turn, giving the Siri a nut flush draw. Let's see if Fred Chaminara checks again. He does. Now, Amir Nasiri has a legitimate draw. He's got the nut flush draw. This could get him into some trouble here. Or maybe could win him a lot of money if he gets lucky. In either event, I'm pretty sure he's going to bet something here. And Nasiri tosses $20,000 cash into the pot, which is now worth 50 grand. He's exactly a four to one underdog here in this hand. I have no idea what's going through Fred Chaminar's mind right now. He didn't like the queen. I think he's probably going to call. But he surprised us on the last hand when he checked raise with nothing. He was probably trying to check raise again, but this queen has to slow him down a little bit. Chaminara calls, so they'll head to the river. To four of spades, Nasseri misses on his flush draw, but he's paired his four. Well, Fred Chaminara still does not like that queen. One hand that I'm sure is going through his mind is queen ten. Well, Chaminara checks. And now Amir Nasseri's made a pair. And he checks. Showtime. Hoping a pair of fours will be good. Ace 10. Of course they're not. And Dr. Amir Nasiri loses another big hand to Fred Shamanar. And shamanar has got the advantage and the money. He's up 40 grand for the night while Nasiri falls deeper in the hold. He lost another 35 grand in that hand alone. Continuing to underestimate your opponent can be very costly in a poker game. All right. 
I'm starting. All right. Straddle? Everybody yeah. want to? Mm -hmm. One round. Just, just let Eli right. do it then. Let's do it. We'll do it. Do what? Eli did it. Straddle. 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 We're going to straddle it one round. Go. Oh, that's okay with me. All right. I'm not you said Joe is not gambling. I'm not gambling. Yeah, do it. you won't do it. I, I know. promise you I won't. I didn't say anything, so I don't have to do it, right? Oh, uh, we give a little handicap. Well, we'll see where it stops. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see We'll see who's the chickens. I am. I don't care. $1,200 Doyle has got everybody to agree to put a $1,200 live straddle. That's a good race, Doyle. That would be uh, three blinds. That's all what we need. I thought everybody agreed. Fred Chaminara seemed a little doubtful about it. Oh Sammy Farhar jokingly said he wasn't going to do it. But I think he will. That's going to really make this next round very exciting. And Doyle took advantage of the situation right away. Ellie was the first one to put the 1200 on. Doyle raised the 4000. Four other people called. Ellie's got to put in 2800 more. He does with the King Nine. And we've got six players in this first straddle pot for 4000 each. All right, let's help it. So six way action, twenty four thousand eight hundred dollars in the pot, and the flop comes five six ten with two spades. Dole Brunson is the only one with a ten here. He's got the best ten. The first pot since we started. Sammy, you got to so find a different line. Instead of asking to chop, next time you know what you should do, ask him to put five thousand more each in. Brunson starts you know I mean? things off with a healthy more, right? thirty five thousand dollar bet. I think it's going to finish things off here. Each, yeah. I don't think anybody's going to call. See, if, see how much they like their hand. All right. <laughs> All right. I got one of those. How much you bet, Doyle? Oh, Brunson takes down the pot. Yeah, wow. Now, now we got a poker game, see? Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> look at the, look at Doyle saying, I'm sorry, I'm not done. <laughs> Winning a pot has not gotten old for Doyle after all these years. <laughs> the players want more action. They've raised the price to play, so monster pots cannot be too far behind. We're in downtown Las Vegas at the Golden Nugget for high stake poker. And you bet that they don't find it? What are you talking it? about yeah. Saddam Hussein? You guys got the no, no, Bin Laden. No, Bin Laden. Uh, you must have inside We're talking about when they invaded uh, uh, Doyle? Af Afghanistan. Or... You bet that they won't find him? You must have inside information yeah, from right. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> no, you bet that they well, won't find They won't find him because there was $25 million or oh, $50 million. This was back there. years ago. It was $50 million on his head. Do you remember when they thought they had him cornered up in those mountains? Yeah. That's when we bet. I said he'll find a way out of there. This is not exactly the Capital Gang. I don't think the McLaughlin group is uh, worried at this point. <laughs> so Freddie Deeb's got a 5-3 of clubs, raises the $1,200. Amir Nasseri calls with a King-10 offsuit. 20,000. Negrano wants to play his 4-3 offsuit. And Alesra calls with his Jack-9 offsuit. Look what the style they did. Straddle makes it a game. And Brunson right. checks from the big blind with a queen seven off suit. So five players stay in the hand. We head to the flop. Three deuce five with two diamonds. Now, when you have five people limping in, flops like this are not innocent. Somebody could have a big hand here. And as we see, Daniel has a pair and an open end straight. And Freddie Deeb has flopped two pair. I'm going to bet uh, 3,200. You know, you know when I like it, when Daniel was leading in this Bellagio tournament, and he said, I bet $4,355,000 um, <laughs> on Ellie's trying to get some TV <laughs> time here, and Doyle doesn't <laughs> want any part of it. I from Phil. I learned from Phil. Echo. So, Dave's just going to call with his top two pair. He's going to let a card come off here. Doesn't want to see an ace, doesn't want to see a six, and doesn't want to see a diamond. But he'll take this three, giving Deeb a full house. Threes full of fives, and the Grano trips threes. And he checks now. Wow, I forgot about the complicity. Thank you. I saw it. I'm glad the club is still there. You saw what? It's just, just three fives. Freddie Deeb does not know how strong yeah, Daniel Legrano is here. It just fired eight grand to the pot. Daniel's debating whether or not to raise. But he just calls. Yeah, Daniel knows he could be beat. River cards, another deuce. That's a terrible card for Daniel. Daniel has made a full house. And he's got to feel the best that Freddie could have is the same full house. Now, Freddie had flopped a straight. Daniel now has the best hand.
And Daniel leads out with $25,000. 25000 $25,000. What do you do here if you're Freddy, Gabe? Well, he's gonna raise. Raise. <laughs> Steve raises to 75 grand. That's 50 more from the ground to call. 50 more. Raise 50,000. Oh, man, this is a cooler. You got fives full. Or quads. Or three fives. I can't fold. You gave him all the good hands. Those are the ones that beat me. Yeah, but there is one hand that's a tie. Daniel named the three hands that would beat him. More. Freddy could have ace three, and Daniel does not want to throw a full house away. He knows the best he could hope for is a split pot. It's a very bad position to be in. I feel like he might have flopped five, three fives or something. Five three. That's the only yeah. hand he didn't call. Yeah. He called it. Oh, he didn't. See He's it. got no. I got three. Negrano calls and fast Freddy Deed cash in on his full boat, taking down a whopping one hundred and seventy-nine thousand two hundred dollars. No, I didn't think it was a bluff. Why? Oh, no. It seemed would have been a stupid bluff. I've done stupid things all my <laughs> life. <laughs> but not in that hand, Freddy. Fifty thousand dollar raise was a perfect raise. If he raised seventy-five thousand, made a hundred thousand to go. I don't think Daniel would have called. Negrano's fallen deeper and deeper into the hole. He's now lost about $275,000 for the game. And he's got his work cut out for him. So far, this has been Bad Beat City for Daniel Negrano. Okay, we saw a little bit of everything tonight. There was some pushing, some shoving, and a lot of interesting hands. Biggest development is Doyle Brunson has got everybody to agree to put the $1,200 straddle on it. Now, that's going to double the stakes. And naturally, Doyle loves it. The higher things get, the more he likes it. The only objective seemed to be the amateur Fred Chaminara. The other amateur, Dr. Amir Nasiri, he's a big loser, so he didn't mind. And, of course, neither did any of the pros. <laughs> well, the honeymoon is over. It looks like the players have agreed to speed things up, and it's certainly been fun to watch. Next time on High Stakes Poker, the game that. changes gear with everyone playing a live straddle, sending the stakes skyrocketing. Fine. The Hall of Famers come out swinging. Will the amateurs get hurt? It's going to be one hell of a fight. Next time on High Stakes Poker.